Hey everyone, Sterling here from Day Trading Forex Live. We're going to be going over uh, what we typically term as the smart money levels. Now, uh, we've had a lot of questions on it. The, the basis for what we do revolves around the fact that banks have no choice but to accumulate a position, manipulate the market, which is often marking the end of the accumulation because it, it, it in and of itself is a form of accumulation. They're inducing one side of the market so they can either buy into selling pressure or sell into buying pressure. Again, they need the opposite side of the market, therefore they create the belief in the opposite side. And as they're creating selling pressure, they're buying into it, or as they're creating buying pressure, they're selling into it. So when we think about the very basics of that, if they've accumulated a position, they manipulate the market, they enter then a, a trending phase in the market, well, one question that we have is, is how do they trend the market? What can we use to, to catch... Uh, this weekly trend that they how they often drive the price through the course of a week generally don't try, tend to drive the price over the course of uh, over the course of the entire week but it's a good chunk of the week usually three or four days they tend to drive the price but we can capitalize on that once we've seen uh, you know get, again seen the first push and so what I want to cover here is just going back over some things that we were looking at in the room things we posted on the forum trades we were taking and uh, it's going to be a, a three-part series on, you know, more than likely three parts uh, on on essentially breaking down what they're doing. So when we're looking at the euro, this is back in in March 21st. We were we were sitting in this this accumulating type price action. They're hitting the lows, hitting the highs, hitting the lows, hitting the highs. Confusing traders. Typical uh, typical price action right before the market moves. It's it's not coincidence that you see this type of back and forth, hit the highs, hit the lows type price action before the market moves. Now the market tends to move once it starts that trend. They tend to move the price in three waves, uh, and so after we've seen that accumulation, after we've seen the first push up, we know that the probability lies in two more to the upside. Now again, this is this is a probability. This is uh, gives us a strong indication of where we should look for manipulation at. One trade specifically that uh, we were looking at in the forum on this one. One thing that we we're you know screaming about for a day or so on this on, on the euro was at the end of this third push not only is is there that weekly cycle that tends to happen over the course of uh, three to four days but there's also that that intraday cycle that tends to happen as well and while the intraday cycle can get a bit muddy and can be you know not not quite as clear when it is clear that's where we're really able to capitalize on it so let's zoom in here and again this looks like the uh, the third push is, is completing on this day and we were actually uh, in the room at this time going to the 15 minute here I'm gonna zoom over and if you notice on this day again let me zoom out a little bit we went into a sh everything that happens on a longer time scale happens on that shorter time frame scale as well so we fell into accumulation again they accumulate before they move the price they manipulate the price down inducing selling buying into that selling pressure and then we see the first push up we see a second push up and we see that third and final push up in addition to that third and final push up what do we have well at the end of that move we also have a stop run so we're getting a lot of indication here we're on the third day in the weekly cycle we've had three short-term levels to the upside and the markets ending with a stop run if you're not familiar with the stop run there's a video uh, a couple years back I did that's that's on YouTube of the stop run reversal and when we see all that really coming together that's what's given us an indication of hey this market has an extremely high probability of reversing that's why again I was mentioning this in the forum mentioning in the room um, and, and it gave a gave a great opportunity I believe the Swiss he was setting up exactly inverse at this point uh, for a nice trade as well so as we go out we move forward what do we have coming back the other way well we have our first push down accumulation second push down more accumulation third push down so another great trade we had at the end of the uh, in the third push. Unfortunately, we were actually in the second push. It just stalled for a little bit longer. Uh, some of the members did very well, and I personally was not in that second move down, but did very well in this third push. Now what happens? Again, third push in the overall weekly cycle that tends to happen uh, over three, four days, sometimes five days, as was the case with this one. It just drags on for a bit longer. But actually, I think this was closer to four days. But at the end of that move, what do we see? Well same thing as you always generally tend to see or a common thing you'll tend to see is you'll see a stop run you see it blow through the lows at the end of the third push and as it's blowing through those lows again what are they doing if they were short they have to buy their position back to close out that position for a profit how do they buy the position back well they have to induce sellers correct so if they 
drive the price beyond that low, what's happening? They're inducing breakout traders. And anybody that was long expecting this low to hold is getting stopped out. Therefore, they have to sell it back. So you have those that are selling on the breakout and those that are selling as they get stopped out. Smart money buys into that selling pressure. And that's why you see the stop run at the end of the move. They're using that to close out their position for a profit. So what we did here, um, this is a trade again. We mentioned, mentioned in the forum, mentioned in the room. A couple traders got it. Very nice trade on this one. And uh, we actually closed this one out in the room the next day for, for 125 or so pips. Not every trade is going to run that far, but that was just happened to be a, a nice example, giving us a, a good example of, uh, of what we're looking for. Now, again, this was we had what looked like the first push down. It looked like we were going to continue. We went through the previous low, so it looked like we were going to make a uh, – it looked like this was the first push down. And so we were expecting two more to the downside. Now, again – using the intraday cycle of uh, again using the intraday cycle of tends to tends to drive the market in three waves when we came out of this low we made a first push up we made a second push up we made a third push up this is again something we mentioned in the forum we had three cycles against the overall cycle and gave us another great shorting opportunity from that point go back out to the hourly and we will again that completed with a second push down on the on the uh, third day ended up making that third push to the downside and what you know what does it end in well again another stop run they drive the price past the low quickly reject it back up now these aren't huge stop runs you're not seeing it blow through by 10 15 or not by 20 30 pips you're seeing it blow through by uh, 5 10 pips none the nonetheless illustrating the point of that stop run coming at the completion of the third push down now, again, what do we have here? Well, we had the first push up. Now, what was interesting about this one, actually, I posted the review that a member review is on the site from this day where we were calling the entry or exactly what was going to happen out of Asia, you know, 12, 14 hours in advance. And that's you're not going to have the opportunity to do that every time. But when the first push is clear, you know, you're more than likely going to see two more to the, in that same direction. So we said, OK. Let Asia accumulate. Look for the manipulation out of Asia. We got that manipulation down. People did very well on the second push up. Same thing the next day. Accumulation during Asia, manipulation down, third push up. Same thing's going to happen because that's how smart money drives the price. While it's not going to be perfectly clear all the time, there's enough time to where, you know, as, I've, as I said how many, in the room, how many times does it take uh, of catching that move before it makes a, a great month or a great week? And it doesn't take too many of those to, uh, again, to equal a nice week. So how do you how do you determine level? How do you determine okay, well, was that a true first push or was that a true second push? It's all about context. It's all about the context of what you've seen prior to that. You got to figure bef when we see three levels down, we're expecting the market to reverse until proven otherwise. And so we saw three levels down. We saw it ending in a stop run, and then we saw a strong first push up. So that gives us a good indication that, you know, this truly is reversing. Now, additionally, another rule we use is that the market, if smart money is truly driving the price, is not going to be a 20, 30 pip move. And that's where we get our risk reward from. If we've, if we've correctly identified what smart money is doing, it's not a 20 or 30 pip move. And so a base rule to use is what we call a, a 90 pip tool. And again, it's a tool because it's not a rule. It's a tool. It's, it's, a, it's an indication of how far we should at least expect the market to go if smart money is truly driving it. Now, this tool will fluctuate as time goes on. If you were using 90 pips five years ago, you'd have been in trouble on the pound. You've been missing a lot of the inf a lot of the move because, you know, four years ago or so on the pound yen, it was very common to see 300 pip nights, 1200 pip weeks. You know, you go back and look at these charts, and and so this rule is going to change as the volatility changes over the course of months and years. Uh, you're either going to have to be shrinking that or increasing that. And again, it's not a uh, not rocket science there. It's just a, a general rule of thumb how far they're going to tend to drive the price. 90, 100, 110 pips tends to be the common denominator. Now we, we just choose the low side, so we play it safe. So again, you look at these moves here, and are they fulfilling 90 pips? Well, first move up, 115, fulfills that criteria. Second move up, 138. Third move up, 122. Now we go back and, and we look at the same thing Again, the same thing on the on the way down here. We were measuring it from this point, 150. Obviously, from the highs, it was a, a bit more than that. But we were measuring it from there because, again, we were 
Uh, really wasn't a clear first push down until that point. Second push down, 140. Third push down, what do we see? Well, 120. So again, we go back to this, and, and these, I can tell you right now, these levels were, were well over 90 pips each. But that's what's given us a good indication of, was that truly uh, the first push, or was that truly the second push? Well, did it meet 90 pips? And that was another indication that was telling me, when we were taking the short from here, that was another indication that was telling me that this overall weekly third push was over. We had moved 120, 127 pips at that point. What was the second move? Well, 109 pips. What was the first move? 113 pips. So again, we're, we're taking the low side of, of how far they're going to tend to move the price. And if it's not fulfilling that criteria, if it's you know 70 pips, well, you know maybe we need to sit back and we need to reassess. So the key here, guys, is, is looking for uh, the, the three cycles. And again, looking for the reversal at the end of that third overall cycle, because that's where people get into trouble. They say, okay, well, I got a trend now. And that's exactly the point when they're when they tend to reverse the price. That's why you know you hear people say the trend's your friend. Well, I don't know a single trend follower that does does extremely well on a on a daily or on a excuse me on a short term chart. I believe that uh, on a longer term chart somebody could do better with it, but on a short term basis, I don't know a single single trend follower that. Uh, and again, I'm I'm always happy to be proven wrong. But anybody anytime I say this in the room where somebody is just blindly following a trend, it doesn't tend to work out because that's not how smart money drives the price. They assess the market, where's the money at? They drive it for three or four days, and then they reassess where the market's at. Where's the money at? Because it's not where the fundamentals are. Uh, it's not where the technicals are. It's a very simple thing. This is their market to make money in. This is their business. And so the simple question becomes, which way should I drive the market? to accumulate the most the largest position and create the largest profit on this move. If it's to the downside and that's against fundamentals, well that's where it's going. If it's a, to the upside and that's against fundamentals, well that's where it's going. So look for this cycle guys. Again, these moves tend to be at least 90 pips. They tend to be separated over the course of 3 or 4 days. They tend to start out of Asian accumulation. And you start putting these tools together when you see the end of that third push, you're going to say to yourself, "Okay, well, it's the end of the third push. I'm seeing a stop run at the end of this move. Maybe I should be looking for a move the other way. Just a few tips to, uh, to again, get into uh, picking those out a bit better. Now I'm going to pick on, on somebody from the room here real quick. We'll go over to the, go over to the Euro. And uh, last night, we've, this is, uh, looked like we had a first push out of, a, uh, out of accumulation in, in the Euro on the hourly chart starting on the third. It looks like we had the second push down, and uh, one of the members in the room, I'll, I'll leave him unnamed, but uh, actually, no, I'll call him out, Daniel. Uh, he, he, was, uh, he was posted in the room, and, and I, I'm, I felt a bit ashamed because Daniel's actually absolutely uh, cleaned up on me in the last two months. He's, he's outperformed me, but on this one move, he was taking the euro dollar, the euro yen, and the pound yen. With a closed position, I'll, I'll post the uh, uh, screenshot I took out of, out of the room. Um, He'll probably, he'll probably yell at me for that. But I took a, took a screenshot of the room of him posting his, his pip count for that move. And this is a trade not just he caught. You know, other members in the room are doing doing very well with it because, again, they're looking for those levels. They're saying, okay, well, I've seen two to the downside. I'm expecting that third push. And, uh, again, they're, they're doing very well, very well with uh, that eliminating a lot of the factor of, of direction. Direction is, is a huge part of it. There's direction and there's timing. If you can eliminate direction, it simply becomes a matter of timing. And timing is what we're going to get into in the next videos because we can time when these are going, when these have a high probability of starting with the second push or the third push. With a, with a very strong high probability, uh, we, can, we can select when they're going to drive it and then exactly time that out with with some other tools that we use and that's what we're going to get into with the the other parts in this in this what is probably going to be a three-part series so it really comes back guys to the, the the basic principle i like to use and that is we'll never know everything that the banks are doing there's we we know certain things with a very high probability uh, but we'll never know everything and it's similar to that of a of a puzzle if there was a puzzle of of say your spouse or um you know, whoever it may be that's familiar to you, how much of that puzzle would you have to have complete before you recognize the picture in that puzzle? Well, if it was somebody very familiar to you, to you or a picture of your house, and that was what the puzzle was, as you got 50 or 60 or maybe even, you know, maybe it takes you 70% of the puzzle to get done before you recognize it, 
you would recognize what that picture was. And it's the same thing with what we do. The banks leave a trail because they have no choice but to leave a trail. Because of the position size they enter, they have to induce sellers to do the opposite of what they're, or traders to do the opposite of what they're doing. Uh, if they want to buy, they have to induce selling. If they want to sell, they have to induce buying. It's a basic market fact of supply and demand. So because of this, they leave essentially a footprint in the sand, and that's what we're tracking. They tend to drive the price a certain way. And again, while we never know everything, we know enough to really capitalize on it when things become more clear. And that's exactly, you know, that that's really not much different than what uh, what Daniel was saying in the room. And, and he, I think he brought up a good point and. And, you know, we're, Chad and I are very appreciative of members that, uh, that, that give back because they've, you know, they, they feel like they've got to the point where they, they can give back. And Chad and I are very appreciative of it because it, it helps traders. It's a different insight. They point out what they do and, and it's a different insight. And what he was saying was essentially a principle that we hold very close to what we do. Hey, there's going to be times where we sit on our hands and we do nothing. Maybe we do nothing for a couple of days. But when the time comes when it's very clear, as it as it always ha always tends to happen on a you know generally happening at least once a day, um, but even if it's a you know couple times a week, when it's very clear, you're you're really able to uh, take quite a few pairs as he did last night, and you know take what would generally people would be happy for or happy with in a month, take it in a night. And while uh, again, Daniel's been a quite the superhuman lately. The point is a lot of members are catching it because they're being patient, they're staying disciplined, uh, and they're waiting for the proper setups, which uh, you know Chad and I couldn't be happier with. So, all right, guys, well, next video, we're going to get into timing a little bit more. Again, look for these levels. If you've seen a first push out of, out of accumulation, you're probably going to see two more in that direction. Did the move go 90 pips? Are, is the move separated by, uh, you know, uh, clearly separated by some type of a, a accumulation? That's what you're gonna be looking for. Uh, is it coming off of a stop run? Are you see? Did you see a stop run? And then you had a first push. If that's the case, well, you know, even more highly, even more of a likelihood of seeing two more in that direction. So, I hope this video helps, guys. As always, member or not, we're here to help. If you have questions, feel free to email Chad and I at daytradingforexlive at gmail .com. We are happy to uh, to reply to those emails, and there's a lot of free, a lot of a lot more free information on the site. If you'd like to check that out, uh, you can find the the site link below. So, until next time, guys. Uh, until about next week will be next time we will uh, get that next video out, illustrating timing a bit more, and I will see you guys then. Happy trading.